Hi everyone, I'm Ping. Uh, nice to meet you. And uh, I'm actually the one that have a PhD degree. Um, <laughs> actually, I'm also joking. I don't have a PhD degree. <laughs> so uh, I'm just a web developer for most of my career. So today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, building an uh, audio model using TensorFlow.js. Uh, so I want to take you through this uh, using uh, through a uh, lens of a uh, web developer. So uh, let's recap what Nick have told you about uh, TensorFlow.js. Uh, TensorFlow.js has a core API. Uh, it's a very low level API, which help you guys to uh, deal with a very fine grind of operations from TensorFlow and build your models as well as training. Uh, Layer API is much easy to understand. Uh, so that's what I will focus on in this talk, is a high-level uh, machine learning API. And also, you'll be able to use um, TensorFlow uh, save model, uh, Keras model, uh, load it to the browser to run your uh, inference as well. Um, of course, we have Node.js support. Uh, all of you guys are you know, JS developers. You like to use Node.js. Uh, so we will also mention that in our talk. So now, let's say what we want to do here. We want to build a robot, which can understand what you talk about, but may not be able to talk to you, you know, like R2D2, right? So, um, but how we get started? It's very hard to get started, right? So as a web developer, a lot of time machine learning is so hard. You don't know where to start. This happened to me as well. I, I from the start, I don't know where to go. So maybe we step back um, to see what we can do with TensorFlow.js. Uh, here are a couple of choices we could do when we're building an audio model. We can train and create a model from scratch using TensorFlow.js, or we can use our existing model, like an uh, image model that we, you see earlier, uh, the mobile net. Or we can use a buy one you know, robot from the internet, you know. That probably another talk from a company from uh, Seattle, right? Amazon, you know. Um, so in this talk, I'll be focused on how to create and train a model directly from scratch using TensorFlow.js. Okay, so you guys probably have the same situation as I do, is that machine learning is so hard. Uh, you know, when I try to start building a model on my own, I feel like I stuck from the beginning. Uh, why? First thing I notice is that the language barrier. I'm a JavaScript developer. I don't know Python. There's a lot of tools I use that does not exist in Python, right? It, it just prevents me from doing anything. But with TensorFlow.js, this barrier is, is taken away because now you can use JavaScript directly to build your model. Secondly, I hate to uh, try to understand all the terminology and concept of machine learning. It's rooted in mathematic, you know, researches. It's so much, uh, you know, kind of uh, I don't understand concept. But with the API, the tooling we provide is easier to understand. You have a layer API tell you what you can do to build a model. Uh, I will show that to you in this talk. Finally, I find frustrated when I try to do machine learning is the workflow and data flow is so much different when I'm building an application. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, when you're doing machine learning, usually what you do, you take a bunch of data, right? And then you have a bunch of hypotheses. You're trying to prove, you know, using the deep network, trying to train the network to prove your hypothesis is correct. But that's not how we do in building app web application. We have a requirement. We follow some kind of a business logic. We build a, you know, a, a basic application that tell me true or false. But that's not the case with machine learning. It's all probability. So I want to show you why this actually makes sense uh, if you understand how the process works. Let me show you uh, a diagram uh, of the machine learning workflow. 
on the left side is the training process. You have a training data, you have a label. You extract features out of it, and then you build your model to, uh, to understand those features and trying to learn the intricacy of those features. And once that's done, you apply that model towards the real world data. That's called inference. That's where you give the data to the model, and then you have a prediction of that model. Like what uh, Nick showed earlier, it tells you, hey, this image is a banana, or this image is a, a shoe, or something else. But the, the difference is that in machine learning, your prediction may not be true. Not like you're building an application. You know that with my business logic, that's exactly you know, where I'm going. Uh, you usually want to feedback your, uh, your, your, your errors towards your model, to update your model, to refine your model. So when I try to understand this workflow, I kind of go back to uh, TDD. It's like test-driven development, right? So you get your test written first. That's your testing set and your training set and your label. And you try to use the model to, to get a program, to train the program, to train the, mo uh, the machine learning program to understand your data set. And finally, you get the result you want. So uh, let, I will show you all of this in our uh, example. So uh, let's follow that, follow, uh, follow that uh, you know, workflow. First thing we want to do, we want to see what data set we have from audio model. For audio model, we use uh, uh, something called uh, Open Speech Record, uh, which is built by our colleague named uh, Peter uh, Warden. He has this uh, open source speech data set. You could contribute to that by going to that link. Uh, you could help us to improve our accuracy, uh, provide your own uh, you know, voice to the data set. It contains about like 12 different commands, uh, like left and right, up and down. Uh, so when you look at uh, audio data, normally you will see this, right? A waveform of the audio data. It just, you know, uh, some kind of a, a peak and, and lower point of the audio. But it's not that interesting, right? So you look at this. All you know is that at a certain time, there's a, a spike of your voice. But there's a lot more to it. That's why a lot of time people are saying, uh, when you're dealing with the data, the uh, data um, feature extraction spends, it takes you more time than your model building. So in this case, what we want to do is that we take this time domain of data, we spy a split them into chunks, about like, you know, 20 milliseconds or so. And what we do is that we have some overlapping as well. Why we have overlapping? Because we don't want to uh, kind of uh, miss all the boundary, you know, features. So once we do that, when we divide those data into uh, smaller chunks, we run um, frequency kind of analysis, FFT, on top of that data. What we get is that at certain frequency, uh, you have much more detailed information about what you're saying. So in that case, this audio is, a, let's say, is a go command. What end up is that we can see at certain frequency is a much higher uh, spike. So we can further enhance this data by applying some kind of a, a filter, which is uh, enhanced, it's trying to simulate how people uh, understand audio. When people understand audio, they are more uh, sensitive to the low frequency, but less sensitive to high frequency. So we will have a much smaller filter on the low frequency and group all the high frequency together. So as a result, we try to, um, what we do is uh, trying to uh, compress the high frequency and kind of uh, enhance the low frequency 
uh, of the data. At the end, what we get is an image. This is very interesting because we transform the audio into an image. What you see here is uh, vertically, that's the frequency domain. Horizontally, that's the time domain. So that's the same uh, image for the go command. But you can see there's a lot of feature now we can recognize from that image. Uh, this is how we actually be able to differentiate a lot of different commands. You can view this as like a skeleton or the you know, x-ray of the image, of the voice clip. So um, now we have the data. We create a feature set of the data. Uh, we want to build a model to analyze this data. What we can do with the model, there's a couple of architecture we could use for machine learning. Normally, we have uh, something called CNN, which is a convolutional network, neural network. It's targeting the image uh, kind of data. And we have RN, which is a recurrent net neural network. It's targeting language, targeting uh, some kind of time series of data. LCM, uh, Nick mentioned earlier, is long-term, short-term memory. Uh, it's a special case for RAN, which allow you to remember things way back instead of just the series that you, uh, you use for the input. Uh, also, there are a lot of other architecture, for example, GAN, which is hard to pronounce, Generative Adversarial Network, which is an uh, um, interesting architecture help you to produce an image that um, is similar to human uh, perception. So uh, it uses uh, a two competing network, trying to fool the one network, trying to fool the other, but the other one trying to uh, correct the, uh, the first one. So there's a lot of uh, network you could choose from. Uh, this is where you would want to you know, get familiar with those networks and pick the one actually suited for your use case. In our particular case, since we are converting audio to image, we want to use the CNN, which is the image model. So here um, are some code that how we do it with the layer API. Uh, this is just a sequential model, uh, which means that the model, uh, the layers are executed in sequence. First thing we do, we add a convolution to the layer. What is a convolution to the layer? It is just a linear filter towards the image. What does it do? When the model is trained, it becomes a kind of a, a feature extractor for you. It can be an edge detector, can be an a image smoother, or a enhancer, a sharpener. Uh, it all depends on how the model understands the image. So then we add uh, max pooling. What did that do? We actually extract the image uh, to a smaller data set. Basically means that I want to see the image in a higher level. It helped the model to be more generalized because it prevents you to be overfitting to the image that you provided. Next, we just add a bunch of more of this. So it's very simple. Just you know, keep doing it. Uh, so what this do is that what does this do is that it trying to give the network opportunity to learn more, you know, like features out of the uh, image. So. Next, we flatten the 2D image into a one-dimensional output because our final output is a score of all the labels that we want to identify. And, and we add a dropout layer. Dropout layer, if you understand, is, uh, is a way to uh, help the model to prevent it overfitting. It, randomly setting certain weights to zero. So the model will not overfit into certain um, particular image. 
And the dense layer help you, is a just full, fully connected layer. Uh, it, it can learn anything, nonlinear or linear uh, combination of all the features that you learn from the convolution and uh, max pool uh, layers. Finally, we add a soft max. Uh, this is where basically a uh, function to uh, give the probability for each label. So this is a very typical uh, CNN model. Uh, I'll give you uh, a more diagram how uh, that actually works. So for example, on the left side, this is a, a, a car image. The first convolution layer, just take the image and, and basically combine them into a smaller picture. And what it detects is the edge of the, of the car. And Combining all of that, we do a, a max polling of layer. What it's doing is that shrink the image into a smaller dimension. And then we just add more of those layer. After that, they're doing continue uh, those kind of combinations. Finally, we flatten it. We fully connect, connect with the fully connected layer. We have a prediction of whether this is a car, a van, a truck, a bicycle. We give a probability for each of them. So this is a very typical CNN model. So that's what we use for this particular audio model as well. Uh, so if you're interested in going through uh, some of this API, there's a URL for it. And also, um, the, our API is based on the Keras API. You could go to this link for the details, uh, the rationale behind those definition. OK, so the last thing, as you remember in the, in the control flow, is training. You have the data set. You build your own model. Now you need to train the model to understand those data set. Uh, luckily, uh, in our uh, layer API, this is only one, uh, one method you need to call. This is called a fit. So the first parameter is your uh, data set. The second parameter is your label. And there's a bunch of uh, parameters you could use. For example, how big your batch size is, how many epochs you want to run. And you can automatically slice the, image, uh, the training set into a validation set as well as a training set. So all of this uh, I will demonstrate in, a, uh, in, in this following demo. So um, let me uh, connect to my uh, desktop. So my desktop actually has a pretty beef GPU. Is a uh, you know eight gig memory, uh, Nvidia kind of a top end GPU. So um, hold on a second. Um, so let me go to my directory. Oh uh, sure yeah. Is it better. OK, so um, this is our training data set. You can also see it in our GitHub um, repository, uh, tfjs.model. So I'll, I'll start the command line program. You can see here we are connected to the GPU backend. Um, so there are a couple commands we can do. So let's create a model first. So in this model, I will have two labels, up and down. So you can see this is all the architecture we built it for that model. It had convolution uh, layer and max pool layer. 
the total parameter we have is about 300,000 300, uh, parameter we will train in this particular case. Next, we will load um, the data set. So the data set actually, um, uh, OK, maybe I typed it wrong. Hold on a second. So this data set made of uh, all the WAV files of each command. Uh, so it's about 2,000 audio clips. What it's doing is uh, exactly what I described. It takes the audio uh, file and do the uh, you know, Fourier transform FFT and extracting all the uh, features out of it. Uh, so if you look at the data set size, it's about 1,700. And each image is about 90 to 40, uh, 90 wide and 40 uh, in the height. So what we want to do is that we want to train this particular data set using the model we just created. So this is using the Node.js backend, direct connect to the GPU. The, um, you can see the accuracy and the validation accuracy is going up as we're training. It's about 80% uh, uh, after 10 epochs. Once that's down, once you finish your, your training or you feel comfortable, the accuracy is good enough, you can actually save the model to a file. All right. Audio one. I think I have already saved it previously. Let me try again. I think I typed it wrong. OK, so the file saved. What do you have here are something you can deploy to the browser. Let's take a look at what actually we saved here. So you can see there's a JSON file and the WAV file. JSON file is the topology of this uh, neural network. And the WAV file is the way that you just trained. The 300K of ways you just just be able to train on that one. So let me uh, show you in real time how that actually will work. OK, so here we go. OK, so we actually train three different models. Uh, one we call a frozen model is some model that we train in the Python. And one we call a layer model is the model that we, the one that we just saved. So let's see how would that work. Let's go with the frozen model first. So let me load a file. Right. This is an image generated from that file. Uh, I can try to do it again, because uh, I think I did it earlier. Uh, let me load this file again. Right. So you can hear the voice right. This is the image generated directly from that clip. And the accuracy we got is 0.99% for the label of right. If we switch to a different model, this is a layer model that we just trained. You see it generates a slightly different image because uh, the spectrum we use is a little bit different from the frozen model. So accuracy actually is 100%. So you recognize 
that particular clip as a write for 100 percent. So let's go try to run this model in a live audio stream. So in this model, we have about, um, let's go to the frozen model here. Um, so the frozen model has about, um, you know, like 10 labels. Let me try to show you how it works. Yes, go, off, left, down, up. So you can recognize your voice almost at real time. And also built into a silence detection, meaning when I don't say anything, it doesn't detect anything. This is very critical for audio because not like the image, the audio is continuous uh, uh, signal. You don't want to be able to pick up wrong signal all the time. So this is something you can deploy right now. We have this uh, model available on our GitHub for you to try. And the bottom, you can see this image we are generating. This is the feature we extracted from the audio set. Uh, so let me stop right there. Let's go back to the, to the, to, to the um, slice. So, but you will ask, why, uh, when I only have 10 different commands, what if I need more commands? What do I do, right? If I need to teach my, uh, my robot a new trick, uh, do I need to retrain the model? The answer is no. Actually, you could use something called transfer learning. So what is transfer learning? Um, a professor from uh, Stanford, Andrew N, he predicted that transfer learning will be the next drive for the machine learning success in the next decade also. So let me explain what transfer learning does. It uses the existing model, basically a baseline of the domain knowledge you already trained, just like the audio model we already, already trained. You can apply a new data set. And you can fine tune the ways to fit your particular data set, which means you don't need a lot of data, which means you need much less training. So let me give you a diagram what I mean in, in the, in the, in the, in the you know, scope of uh, audio model. So when we, earlier, when we doing the training, we took a bunch of uh, audio clips, we fit it into the audio model. Uh, we want to freeze all those weights. And we use the final feature vector of that model. What we get is that the knowledge built into that model is kept. And then we add an extra layer of call, what something called a retraining model we train the new ways for that particular use case for the new data set. Then we'll form our new classification. Uh, here are the models that we use to add on to the model that we previously showed you guys. It's just uh, two layers of uh, dense layers. One is the 10 units of dense layer. The other one is the softmax. Softmax is just to use to classify uh, all the labels that you need. So it's fairly straightforward for you to add that. And also, we provide this kind of a, a class for you to use directly, API, for you to use uh, directly in our TensorFlow.js. Uh, so let me show you a demo how that works. So let's go back to the, uh, to the audio model. Here is the transfer learning example. 
So I have, let me uh, just refresh this page. Uh, so I have four labels, one, two, three, four. Those are four labels that I was not trained on. I, I trained, if you remember earlier, it has about uh, 10 labels, you know, yes or no, up and down. Uh, so I want, to, I want my robot to understand one, two, three, and four. What do I do? I, I use a new recording. Let me see. One. 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 Two. 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 Three. 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 Four. 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 So I'll start the training inside the browser. This is the training just inside the browser. A little bit slower than the uh, Node.js uh, using the GPU, but you know, give you a much more flexibility how you can use your sensor data directly into your models. So I think it takes about 10 epochs. Um, the other thing I want to mention is that in this particular case, uh, while doing the similar thing as what Nick could do is like moving the head a little bit, I try to provide a different uh, timestamp of those audios. I want to start at the beginning and middle and the back. So once it is trained, I have a, a, brand new data, a brand new model I can trying to run the transfer learning, trying to recognize one, two, and three, four labels. One, two, three, four. Oh, well, four is not working. Four. OK. Sometimes, you know, you need to train a little bit more, I guess. Uh, but all in all, I'm trying to say is that you have the two to build your own model. If there are some models that you like to use, you can add this extra layer to adapt to your new data set. So in this case, uh, I trained my robot to understand two more words. OK, um, I think that's all I have for today. Uh, I'm open to any question, I guess. Yes, we have this uh, model available in um, TFJS uh, dash models. Uh, we are uh, updating this particular repository constantly. We have a bunch of other models also. Uh, you can check them out. TFJS uh, slash uh, TF JS dash models. Uh, you can just Google search for that. Should be uh, should give you uh, the the correct URL. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the voice is a uh, analog signal, and uh, you are actually differentiating voice by digital uh, digital data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, my second question is based on spectrogram image. Mm -hmm. uh, that was to uh, uh, how do you have feature learning uh, classification of uh, uh, different images which go to different squares, and how do you compare that to LIDAR technology? LIDAR technology. Yeah, okay. OK, yeah. Yeah. So there, there is, uh, let me answer the, uh, the first question. Um, so analog versus digital. So in this particular demo, we are using the browser's audio API, which is uh, we directly consume the API. It produces the digital 
uh, data already. Uh, even in when we're doing the offline training, is a WAV file, which is already digitized. Uh, so uh, we don't, in this particular case, we don't really deal with analog directly. Usually we have some API that digitize the analog signal into a, um, a digital signal for us. And then on top of that, we run you know, the FFT, we run the, uh, you know, the mail bank filter to produce the spectrogram. Uh, on the second question, uh, for like a LIDAR or other image recognition or some kind of uh, uh, object recognition kind of uh, model. Uh, they are very similar. They are based on image recognition. Um, for example, actually we will put out an a object detection model very soon. So we will provide a COCO SSD, which is an object detection built by Google. We will pull that to TensorFlow.js. You'll be able to play with it. Um, so yeah, 